Okay. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Oseda Akon. I'm a PhD student and a member of the Applied Remote Sensing Laboratory at McGill University. I'm supervised by Professor Margaret Kalaska and Dr. Pablo Arimura. So today I'll be talking to you about um, what I titled identification of key biodiversity areas using phenospectral similarity as an index of ecological integrity. So talking about key biodiversity areas, the question that comes to mind is um, what are key biodiversity areas? So the, um, the technical definition for key biodiversity areas is that um, sites contributing significantly to the global persistence of biodiversity. And this means that um, for a site to qualify as key biodiversity areas, um, there must be something really special or unique about the nature and the biodiversity. Okay? So this is a very specific thing. So there are specific um, quantitative um, criteria and thresholds of those criteria that a site must meet in order to qualify as a key biodiversity area. So um, these criteria, these set of criteria can be grouped under five main um, broad headings, which has to do with um, criteria A, which talks about threatening biodiversity, and criteria B, which looks at um, geographically um, restricted biodiversity, criteria C, which also looks at um, ecological integrity and biological processes, as well as irreversibility. So um, all the details of all these um, criteria as listed in the global um, standard for identification of KBA, as well as the recently published um, national um, standard for the identification of biodiversity here in Canada. So there are several groups of people made up of researchers and experts who are looking at different aspects of these criteria and they are basically developing methods and new approaches to actually measure one of these criteria or the other. So, what this study actually is focused on is the um, criteria C, which looks at the um, ecological integrity. So we are looking at um, identifying sites with respect to the ecological integrity criteria, which is the criteria C. So for a site to actually um, qualify for these criteria, the sites must have fully intact um, ecological communities and also the um, ecological integrity can be measured with respect to biotic integrity, which has to do with um, species composition, abundance, and ecological function. And the one key requirement is that there shouldn't be any form of anthropogenic um, disturbance for these kind of sites. But it, currently, the, the, the challenge is that um, the adaptation of criteria C, which is, has to do with ecological integrity, is currently deferred. Um, pending the development of um, methods to measure ecological integrity. And of course, we could make use of um, field measurements, okay? But then um, it could be time and labor intensive to kind of use, rely only on field measurements. And that's how, uh, and that's where remote sensing comes in um, with its capability to measure on a large um, spatial scale. So for this study, our goal was to develop a proxy metric for ecological integrity using remote sensing um, to support the key biodiversity area initiative in Canada. And the idea that we're proposing is to use um, phenospectral similarity as an index of ecological integrity. So talking about phenospectral similarity, we are looking at the similarity of the temporal changes in mean canopy reflectance over the growing season, okay? And our basis for using this as an index is that spectral reflectance is influenced by the taxonomic structure and functional biodiversity of the canopy. And so if an ecosystem is phenospectrally similar to a reference ecosystem of high ecological integrity, our hypothesis is that the um, ecological integrity of the unknown ecosystem must also be high. And Having said that, this implies that in order to implement the spectral similarity metric, um, one, there must be a reference site, and two, there must be 
um, smaller ecological unit for which to compare to that preference site. So um, in this study, we made use of the exceptional forest ecosystem um, data, uh, specifically which is the old growth forest or the ancient category, which is provided by the government of Quebec, and as well as the forest inventory data, and um, which also known as um, by government forest, um, eco forest here, which is also made available by the um, Ministry of Natural Resource. So our first objective here is to examine the utility of the you know, spectral similarity of unknown ecological unit, which is the, um, the forest stands we're looking at, to a reference forest of high ecological integrity, to help us segregate potential size of um, high ecological integrity. And starting off at, at this point, we, we started from a small spatial scale, we just analyzed at a small spatial scale. And we made use of two data sets. And the first data set coming from the um, reflectance product from Planet, and also made use of Sentinel 2 imagery, bottom of atmosphere corrected um, re reflectance from Sentinel 2 imagery. And as I mentioned, our first site at a small spatial scale, we are looking at Mount St. Bruno area. So the area that we chose to study this analysis was around 25 square mm -hmm. kilometers. And it has the um, forest inventory data covering that site, about uh, 158 polygons co covering that site. So the summary of the whole approach is, for example, with regards to Sentinel, we process it up to bottom of atmosphere reflectance. And we have, to, and also we take the, um, the target polygons from the first inventory data and also the um, reference polygon from the exceptional forest ecosystem, which is the old growth forest. Then we extract the mean reflectance for those polygons. Then we calculate the spectral angles to see how similar it is to the reference. And we do this repeatedly for um, the growing season, throughout the growing season from June, July, August to September. So was for um, like selected dates. And of our objective two also seeks to scale up the approach to test how scalable the approach is. And, they, and we, what, we, we, what we aim to achieve here is to use a network of reference sites to create a spatially representative reference distribution against which to compare and aggregate um, potential high ecological integrity forest tanks over a large spatial extent. And we made use of the same data set and, and um, for this particular analysis that we use for the spatial, uh, for the small spatial uh, extent. So a, the study area B, which has to do with the large spatial scale, was conducted at Laurentian region in, in, in Quebec. This is about 12,000 square kilometers and has over 200,000 of these polygons available in this site. So we start off by first aggregating spatially, um, we conducting spatial aggregation of the smaller ecological units based on its proximity to a, um, a reference site. So we, for, for, for this particular site, we had 14 reference sites within this site and we split them into two and we use seven as a reference site and seven also for um, as a way of validating what the approach gets. And as you can see on this map, the, uh, the point, the red point is actually showing the center of the reference polygons. And the, that point are also showing the, the, the points for uh, the site that we use for the validation. So we decided to implement this in Google X engine and so that we can scale up this approach to a very large um, extent. So here we take the planet data as well as the Sentinel-2 imagery and both in surface reflectance or in reflectance. So then we extract um, the mean spectra for each of the target polygons, which is the smaller ecological units and as well as the mean spectra for the reference height. Then we compute the spectral angle and also 
calculate the mean, um, the mean across the growing season, the mean spectral angle across the growing season. Then we determine the threshold of that. Then if a polygon meets that threshold, then it's selected as potential KBA. And to calculate the threshold, we adopted um, an approach that was presented in a recently published paper, which talks about um, a rare value area fractal technique, and which essentially select um, the intersection of these for, um, the, 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 the segment as the threshold to use for delineating the, the, the potential KBS. So some of results. So you see this, this is at a small spatial scale. This is for the, like the planet data set. So each color you see represent specific range of spectral angles. So the smaller the spectral angle, the more it is you know, spectrally similar, it is to um, the reference set. So this map is showing the mean or the average across the growing season and the various um, what's it called? The spectral angle. So if you, as you can see, the next one is also for the um, Sentinel data set. So we have two sites that we have highlighted as the step forest and forest with high ecological integrity. And as you can see, for the disturbed forest, it has a large um, spectral angle compared to the area that we know that is not has not been impacted by any anthropogenic activity. And that is also selected here. So when we apply the threshold, this is what we get. For Sentinel, uh, for the planet data, we, we um, selected 36 polygons out of the 158 as the potential um, KBA. And for the Sentinel, it reduced to 43 polygons as potential KBA. And as you can see, the areas that we selected as the step forest and, and um, forest with high integrity, they were actually picked as part of the, um, the potential sites. And let's, if we look at the, the, uh, the results for the eco region scale or the large spatial scale, um, this is for the planet and the same spectral angle classification. So if you see, um, that's the mean for across the growing season, the mean spectral angle across the growing season. This is showing the variation in the spectral angles. And the same is for also for Sentinel-2. So then when we apply the threshold to this, then we have these sort of maps. So as you can see, the potential KBA is um, for the planet data is selected um, over 4,000 kilometers square out of the 12,000 kilometers square as potential um, KBS. And for the Sentinel, it's reduced to 3,000, um, around 10,700 as um, potential KBS, which consists of about 31% of the entire um, site. So if you recall, I made mention that we withheld seven um, um, sites, re reference polygon, and to, to, to use as a way of validation. So um, the dashed lines are showing the threshold lines, where the, um, the, like the threshold is showing. And for the Sentinel, we've seen that five of those sites were selected as potential KBH, which is about 71%, but for the planet, four of them were selected um, using the, this, the, this approach. So in conclusion, um, we have, we trying to demonstrate this approach um, at different spatial scales using Sentinel data and planet data sets to help us delineate potential stands of high ecological integrity. And we think that this approach, different spectral scales metric can be associated with um, species composition, structural and functional biodiversity, so of the forest canopy to help us delineate a stand level um, potential KBS of a large spatial scale. So this approach, is a very important um, first step to narrow down important uh, biodiversity areas at broader geographic scales and using Earth observation satellite data. And we think that due to the scalable nature of our approach, it will be 
to contribute to KB identification at multiple spatial scale. For example, as the sensor targets it from national to the global scale, believe um, if we're able to um, implement this within for this large scale, it should be able to scale it to a very uh, um, scale at, at like in the national scale. So I'd like to take this opportunity to um, acknowledge and thank um, Professor um, Etienne and my supervisors, as well as the Professor Andrew Gonzalez and his postdoc for their contribution in this, in this particular project. Thank you very much. Thanks, Patrick.